Welcome back to my channel. I'm Salman Nafis and today we're going to do 3D tracking. We're going to use Camera Tracker in DaVinci Resolve Studio and we're going to track the 3D perspective of a scene and then we're going to place 3D text in that scene along with putting in lights to make it more realistic. Just like adding 3D text, you can also add any kind of 3D objects in the scene. 3D tracking is a little different from point tracking and planar tracking, but it is a very interesting thing which allows you to track the movement and perspective of the original camera that you were using while shooting. Now, once you understand this, you can use your own creativity to build unique scenes. We're going to use the Fusion page of DaVinci Resolve, and if you haven't used Fusion before, don't worry because this is going to be a big friendly tutorial. Now when I was coming to Fusion after using After Effects for a very long time, it seemed very overwhelming to me uh, to do all those tracking things and you know especially doing the 3D tracking. But contrary to my belief, once I understood how it is done, once I understood how the nodes are, it became super simple for me to follow along and it actually gave me better ways to basically track a certain stuff. So let's jump into Resolve and start 3D tracking. This is the footage on which we want to place the 3D text and I want the 3D text to be sticking somewhere around this building. And by the way, this footage is already color graded. If you see the before and after, it is like this. Now, if we directly bring this footage into Fusion just like this, we're not gonna get the colored view of it. So let's solve that problem and let's go back to the edit page and because I want this footage to be properly calibrated so that I can adjust the colors of the text and other things accordingly. So what I can do is that I can right click on the clip and I can create a new fusion clip. This way, the color grade is going to be retained in this specific clip. And then we can just go directly to fusion. Once we are in fusion, this is the media in one that is coming in from the timeline. And this node is going out to the timeline. And if you come to any node, you can see two viewers over here so you can bring up this node in the left viewer or you can bring up this node in the right viewer. For now what I'm going to do is that I'm just going to keep it to single view monitor so we can just go up here and we can just turn it to single view monitor from here. All right so let's add in our camera tracker. So click on media in one and press shift space bar for this node selection tool and type in camera tracker. Let's add the camera tracker before we hit auto track, we're just going to increase the detection threshold value to around 2.24. And then we're going to reduce the minimum feature separation a little bit somewhere around here. And these are the values that work best for me and they give me less bad points for tracking. Then another thing that you can do for better tracking and getting, you know, better points for auto track is that you can just turn on this bi-directional tracking it will also help you if you're tracking it uh, from a center point. Then we can also select preview auto track locations and we can simply press auto track. And as it is tracking, you can start to see some points that it is picking up to track. Once the tracking is done, it is automatically going to figure out what camera it was shot on and what was the focal length. And you can also manually change it to match with your scene. But for now, we're just going to go to the solve option over here. And we're going to see how good of a tracking did we get. And for that, we're just going to hit solve. Once the solve is done, what we are interested is in this average solve error. If this is below one, that means we have got good tracking data. And if it is above one, that means we don't have good tracking data. And if you want to solve it, what you can do is that you can just come up over here to the maximum track error and you can just reduce it. Uh, I think for me, I think I'm just going to reduce it a little bit to get even better tracking points. As I've done it, you can see some of the bad points are highlighted in yellow now. So what we can do is that we can just delete those points from here. And once they are deleted, we can hit solve again. And you can see now that we have even better average solve error. That means we've got good tracking. Now, once that's done, we just need to go to export. And now we need to select a portion out of this clip that we want to stick the text to. And for that, just go to 3D Scene Transform. And instead of Align, just select Unaligned. 
and now select the points you want the text to be tracked to. So we can just drag it like this and we can select some points like this. And if we want to delete some points, we can keep holding command and we can click on a selected point or we can add new points by clicking on by holding command. So once you have selected the points, just set the origin and set it from selection, click on it and then go back to aligned. And once that's done, now we need to export the tracking data. Now let's hit export. And as soon as we export, we will find all of these nodes coming up into the node tree. What we are not interested in now is the camera tracker. So let's delete it by going to the end of this link. And let's delete this link also. Let's move it out of the place. And now we're not interested in the point cloud and ground plane also. So let's delete the point cloud and ground plane too. And let's connect the camera tracker renderer to the media out. So now we have the tracking data. Now we need to bring in the text. So let's go over here to these 3D tools and let's bring in the 3D text. And now connect this 3D text to the Merge 3D and let's click on text 3D and let's type in our text. Now let's adjust the size of this text. Just want it to be like this. And now we can just go to the transform option and we can change the position of the text according to our scene. By the way, if you play it forward, now it's being tracked with that building. And if you're not getting good playback, what you can do over here is that you can right click in this place and you can turn off high quality for now. This is just the preview quality. So yes, it is being tracked, but we want it in a better perspective. So let's go to text 3D, let's go to transform and let's change some of the positions of it. So I wanna place it somewhere around here and then let's move the X axis. One disclaimer over here is that don't play around with the Z axis. Otherwise it is going to move the position of this text back and forth and that is not gonna be sticking to the building then. And now we need to rotate the text a little bit to match the 3D perspective and let's change it around here, somewhere around here, I think, and this one around here. And now we can go back to text and extrude it to make it thick and give it that 3D feel. Right now, it just feels like, you know, a 2D text. So now let's go to extrude option in the text and let's increase the extrusion depth. Somewhere around here, it looks more like 3D. Now let's go ahead and reduce the size of this text a little bit more, probably like this. And I would like to place it a little upwards. And now let's make a copy of the same text because I wanna place 3D over here and that needs to be in a different size. So let's copy this text, Command C, and click in the node area so that nothing is selected and press Command V is going to paste it. Now let's add that same text to the Merge 3D. And now let's change this one. So let's type in 3D and let's go to transform and move it upwards from Y. Just like this. And we can go back to text and we can increase the size of it now. Probably something like this. And we can adjust the transform so that it is little downwards and we can also change the color of this one so in our case let's keep it something like this and now all we need to do is to add lighting to this 3d text so that it matches the lighting of the scene so for that what i'm going to do is that i'm going to bring in two lights one of them is going to be the directional light and that directional light is basically going to mimic the sunlight that is coming from the left hand side and we're also going to add in the ambient light so that we can fill the rest of the areas of this 3D text. So let's bring in the ambient light first. Click in the node tree to deselect everything. Shift spacebar and let's type in ambient light. Let's add that and let's now connect this to the same Merge 3D. By the way, if you wanna bring in any 3D element that you have imported or you wanna build some 3D elements from here, you can also bring those 3D elements directly into this Merge 3D as well, instead of this text. 
So now we have the ambient light. We need to go to the camera tracker renderer and we need to enable lighting in this. So once that's done, we can see the lighting. Now we go back to the ambient light and let's increase the intensity a little bit. Somewhere around here. And now let's add in our spotlight. So again, deselect everything, shift spacebar, and let's type in spotlight. Once you have the spotlight, just connect it to the Merge 3D. And now we wanna see that spotlight in the 3D workspace. Okay, for that, I'm just gonna turn it to two view monitor now. And let's click on the Merge 3D and let's bring it up into the left hand monitor. Just like this. So now we can see the 3D scene. You can keep holding command and you can scroll out. And then let's rotate it. You can keep holding shift and you can rotate a little bit with the scroll wheel. All right, now this is the spotlight that we have. And now we need to adjust it so that it is coming from the left hand side of the scene. So let's click on the spotlight now and in the transform option, so I wanna use a point that can be used as a target and that light can rotate around that target. So let's click on use target and now let's pull the light back in the translation. So go to the Z axis, bring it back just like this. Okay, now we can see the light. Now we need to place it in a way that it is basically falling on the text from the left hand side. Now let's also move the target. This is the target of the light. So let's click on this one. This blue is the Z axis. This is the X axis and this is the Y axis. So click on this blue. Let's move it out a little bit somewhere around here so that it is falling on the text. And now select this light and this X axis of the light because we want to rotate it around. So click on it and drag it a little bit just like this. And you see it moving around. Now we can press it something like this on the same angle so that it feels proper like 3D. So now that's done. Probably if you want to add some color to the light, you can just go to the controls and probably you can just give it a little bit of a warm color just like the sunlight that we have. If you want, and you can press OK now. So your 3D tracking is done and we can simply preview it in real time by going to the edit page. And you can see it is sticking to the building quite nicely. So that's how it is done. If you like the video, give me a thumbs up, drop a comment down below because it really supports the channel. And I will see you in the next video.